And let me start at the beginning. Let's try to do this chronolog in chronological order, and, and, and Garrett can help me. But uh, in the first task, I remember the day after the election at a press conference that was called far too early in the morning after a night of celebration uh, at the Omni Park House. And someone said to the governor, Governor elect at the time, what do you think the toughest challenge that you're going to have? And somewhat presciently, the governor said, nobody can predict what the future is going to bring. We have an immediate challenge, which is to implement the health care reform law. Something that we as Democrats have been fighting for and will continue to fight for, dating back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Harry Truman and John Kennedy and Bill Clinton. But we implemented that law, made some tweaks and changes with all the different stakeholders, health care advocates, hospitals, insurance companies, business community, legislature, and today about 98% of all the people in Massachusetts have access to a quality, affordable health care. I think that's pretty good. We implemented that. What was the percent before you started? I mean, we need picky pieces like that. All right, well, I, I'll get you that, but I mean, I, I think it was probably 60, 70%, yeah, but right? that's great. Yeah. To know that right. 60 to 97 is... So I'll get you the exact figure. So 97.5, or 98% of people with access to quality, affordable health care in the state. Number one, we filed uh, that March of 2007, the Municipal Partnership Act. One of the reasons I ran for lieutenant governor was as a mayor, uh, and many of my colleagues, both as mayors and city councils, school committee people, select men and women, frust felt frustrated because they didn't have access in the corner office. We passed the municipal parts of the municipal, we filed the Municipal Partnership Act, filed the second piece of legislation called the Municipal Partnership Act Two, and have pr approved a whole bunch of things that have helped cities and towns. They could, certain cities and towns have joined the state's insurance, saving tens of millions of dollars. Uh, we closed the telecom loophole. Many of the telecom companies were not paying property taxes on their equipment. Uh, while people on fixed incomes were paying property taxes, these multi-million dollar corporations weren't. Closed that loophole, money directly back to cities and towns. Uh, changed uh, some of the laws and regulations to give cities and towns the ability to, to regionalize services and, and, and bidding and, and a whole bunch of things that aren't always sexy but make a big difference to mayors and town managers and things like that. Uh, we, the governor began a discussion back in 2007 when he gave the commencement address at UMass Boston called the Readiness Project. And he said, you know, we need to write the next chapter in education reform. That, we are, that the world has changed since we passed the first education reform back in 1993, 17 years ago. That the world has become much more competitive, that we need to raise the bar, that a high school degree is no longer enough if we're going to compete internationally. And so he started the, product, the discussion on the readiness project. How do we address the achievement gap? Saying that a high school degree wasn't sufficient anymore, but we should at least have every, kid, every young person today have the equivalent of an associate's degree or some type of vocational technical certificate. And, and, and he started the readiness project, getting two, three hundred stakeholders who care about education, educators, administrators, the business community, people on all different sides of, of the charter school debate, in the room, in a process. <coughs> and that resulted in a piece of legislation that was signed on Martin Luther King Day, education reform, which is giving us a whole bunch of new tools in the toolbox and resources, hopefully with the federal stimulus money, that will help us address the achievement gap that still continues to exist in Massachusetts. And let me just say that our teachers do a phenomenal job in Massachusetts each and every day. They lead the world in a whole, they, yep, they do, clap. They, they do great work. And Massachusetts schools lead the world in the country in a whole bunch of different test scores. But we know that where we have primarily poor kids, we still have this achievement gap where they have a higher percentage of English language learners and kids who are in free reduced lunch and who are special ed, have special ed needs. So we passed that piece of legislation. He began talking about that.